what has changed in our lives? Well, I think that with no doubt, our life changed on March 11th, National Day of Observance. What is life? What has changed in our lives? Well, I think that with no doubt, our lives change on March 11th, the National Day of Observance. Yes, I'm talking about a global pandemic, that's right. Now, people might have stopped moving as much as they used to before. So surprisingly, technology hasn't. Instead, it has accelerated to a level which humanity has never ever seen before. Let me give you an example. People used to clean airports with the help of technology, like clean mobiles. But since touching and grabbing the steering wheel every time seems like a great transmitter for a disease like the coronavirus, they request tech with people. In fact, Corona Pierce International Airport has already replaced hundreds of thousands of employees. From manual operated robotic cleaners, to all new robotic cleaners that don't require a steering wheel, don't require a steering wheel to be touched every time. While robotic cleaners may seem like a temporary solution, making it permanent is a whole different story. You see, when people are forced to leave their jobs, it causes layoffs. Layoffs are harmful for the economy and the psychological life of many people with different needs and abilities. Technology does create some harm on the outside, inside, but not on the outside. Here's what I mean. Think of it as having your gum in your hand. It doesn't hurt the external skin that's on your hand, but it does start to hurt if you unintentionally consume it, especially if it ends up in your stomach. But even if, with tech, even if the tech we use today in today's society, like smartphones, smartwatches, tablets, and laptops, can how, how benefit our daily related lives. It doesn't solve the main problem or general concept of hygiene and sanitation. You see, every time you touch your phone screen, germs are left behind that's on that screen, especially if you recently touched a public handle or doorknob. This is where viruses like coronavirus come into play. Before the pandemic began, what did people do? Well, three things, consumption, waste, and incineration. Let's start with the first one, consumption. People were consuming almost everywhere, from fast food restaurants to high entertainment amusement parks. In fact, Canada's highest nominal GDP in 2019 was 59.4%, which is also equivalent to about 66.8% for every individual living in Canada. Number two, waste. This is a big one. Remember when the people used to have the bottle for trend? Yes, we're talking about non-regrettable plastic water bottles. They have been a big contributor to waste because in America alone, approximately 35 billion plastic bottles are thrown away each year and only 25% of it is recycled. Finally, incineration. About 86 incinerators in the States burn around 29 million metric tons of garbage annually. This generates an enormous emission for the planet's atmosphere. All of these three factors may have caused COVID-19 in the long run. As you can see, technology may sometimes bring us unpleasant consequences if we just do what we want for our own sake. Now, I would like to dig a little deeper and predict our, what our lives will be like after this pandemic is over. Technology will most likely replace most of the jobs that are found to be replaceable with work from home options. As mentioned before, an operator or a cleaning mobile may no longer be needed since the airports and other facilities now have automatic self driving cleaners. It is more beneficial since the employer doesn't have to worry about the employees paying the wage and instead just focus on operating and maintaining costs associated with the clean automobile. But before you panic, here's a little positive reminder. If you assume that robots are soon going to take over the world, think again. If you believe AI is going to take over the world, then what is happening inside you right now? You have 15 trillion, have 15 trillion cells, two times 10 to the power of 25 molecules of each total and a hundred billion neurons each consisting of a unique intelligence. Humans have the power of overcoming AI with three things, soul, love, and guilt. So the next time you think this whole situation we're living in is because of simple technology, think again, because it's, most, because it's actually multiple factors combined to create one both internal and external mix. Thank you.